Hello, I welcome you all to EdCam channel. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the next part of chemical bonding that is molecular orbital theory or in short form, we will call it as a MOT. So I think in your test book, you might have seen this picture, uh, one sided atomic orbital, molecular orbital. So what are these atomic orbital? What are this molecular orbital? We will understand. So without a doubt, let's start. MOT, molecular orbital theory. So let us just try to understand why this theory has introduced. So before this theory, we have already discussed about VVT theory. So what is this VVT theory tells? The VVT theory tells about the combination of unpaired electrons, right? That means there is one center atom is there and this center atom is going to combine with half filled or you can say unpaired electrons. So then that means if some atom has one unpaired electron is present and this is the center atom, this center atom is going to combine with an, another half filled unpaired electron. Okay. So there is the overlapping concept in VBT. Now a question is if you'll consider the VBT theory of oxygen. So according to VBT theory, oxygen is diamagnetic. So VVT theory says about the oxygen is diamagnetic. But practically oxygen is paramagnetic. The bigger question is if you'll follow this VVT theory, that means the VVT theory cannot explain the paramagnetic nature of oxygen. So VVT theory says as VVT theory says that oxygen is diamagnetic, whereas practically or experimentally oxygen is paramagnetic okay so now a new theory has to develop which will deal about this magnetic nature of the molecule now i think that is clear why the vbt theory the vbt theory cannot explain the paramagnetic nature of oxygen that is one of the drawback so to overcome that drawback a new theory was developed that is called molecular orbital theory so first we'll have to look the what is the definition of molecular orbital theory. The atomic orbital loses their identity during molecular formation or overlapping and form a new orbital terms as a molecular orbital. That means whenever there is a combination in between two atoms, for example, atom A is there, atom B is there. So they will combine, right? So atom A has different type of atomic orbital, right? and atom B is also having atomic orbital. So now A and B has to combine. So what happens whenever there is a combination between A and B, the characteristics of atomic orbital, they will lose and they will combine a set of orbitals. They will combine a set of orbitals. Okay. So those new set of orbitals are called molecular orbital. As I have shown you one picture in the first slide, there is a formation of new molecular orbital after combining two boxes, right? So the picture was some kind of this. So here it, they are atomic orbital. Here they are at atomic orbital and they have combined to form a newly generated molecular orbital. So these are molecular orbital. This is also atomic orbital. We will go in detail in the further slides. So let us just first characterize this concept and let us just understand what are the properties and what are the characteristics of this MOT theory. So first one, so molecular orbital formed by overlapping of atomic orbital of the same energy. That means, so the concept says that molecular orbital will form by combination of atomic orbital. So these are the atomic orbitals. You can re represent it with a circle or you can represent with a box. Okay. You can also do with a box. So what are these? These are the atomic orbital. We can think of suppose hydrogen. So hydrogen has only one orbital that is 1s. So 1s has one electron and another hydrogen has 1s that is also one electron. So this is the atomic orbital, right? These are the atomic orbitals. This is also atomic orbital. Now there will be combination of these two atomic orbital. So 1s and 1s. 
so this two one is has same energy so same energy orbital will combine that that says about the first point next we'll go to the point number two now coming to the second point the second point says about the number of molecular orbital formed is equal to number of atomic orbital involved in the overlapping reaction so let us just understand what is the meaning now number of molecular orbital formed here how many molecular orbital has formed this is one this is one so two molecular orbital this is molecular orbital has formed so how this two molecular orbital has formed that is equal to the number of atomic orbital overlapped so these are the atomic orbital right this is also atomic orbital a i am writing so two atomic orbital they have combined and they have formed two molecular orbital so number of molecular orbital combined is equal to the total number of atomic orbital we are combine or overlap now the third point says that half of the molecular orbital have lower energy are called bonding molecular orbital let's go to the picture and understand so here the picture says that half of the molecular orbital are called bonding molecular orbital that means this half which has lower energy one this is called bonding molecular orbital or in short form we will call it as a bmo which are in lower energy so how do you know its lower energy see energy graph is in the top it's increasing so this energy has lower energy lower energy that is directly proportional to the more stability so more stability more stability means less in energy okay so the orbital which has less energy that is called bonding molecular orbital so the next point says about half of the molecular orbital have higher energy are called anti bonding molecular orbital so let's go to the picture so the other half this one this orbital are called anti bonding molecular orbital so these are called abmo in short form okay so abmo has higher energy then the bmo so next thing is electronic configuration in various molecular orbital are given by alpha rule hans rule and paulis rule i guess these three concept you have we have discussed in the atomic structure series so you just follow the alpha rule hans rule and paulis exclusion principle so next we will understand these three rules how can we apply in the mot diagram the last point says about the filling of electrons in this molecular orbital that means here one s has participated here is also one s has participated but a atomic orbital has so many orbitals after one s we will find it as two s after one s there will be two s so two s they will also combine similarly and they will also form bmo and abmo now the third rule says that uh, i am drawing the same thing let's suppose 2s is there so 2s is like this one so here it is bmo here it is abmo for 2s also okay now the last rule says about the alpha rule so what is the meaning of alpha rule alpha rule means electron should be filled in the orbital according to their increase in energy so energy increases energy increases we have to fill like first 1s will come first in 1s we have to fill the first electron after that we have to fill 2s after that we have to fill 3s and so on next is hans rule what is the meaning of hans rule hans rule says about the if there is degenerate orbitals are present degenerate means all having same energy so this is let's suppose px this is py and pz so these are called degenerated orbitals in this degenerated orbitals first we have to fill the electron up spin then we have to fill the electron down spin okay so this is the hans rule 
and last one is Pauli's rule that means in an orbital only two electrons are possible which are opposite to each other okay so in the simple meaning I have explained this one Pauli so now all the so now fourth point says about the filling of electron in the molecular orbital so which are those molecular orbitals these are the molecular orbitals we have to fill those electron according to these three concepts so see first we have to fill the electron so where we have to fill we have to fill the bmo so b this this is one electron this is another electron first should be in the electron should be given in the bmo then after abmo then after bmo then if abmo Hunt's rule. Hunt's rule means degenerate orbitals. In the degenerate means whenever there is a combination of 2p, there we will find out as a Hunt's rule. So similar unpaired electron must be there and those unpaired electron we have to fill, fill uh, we, we have to fill those electrons according to the Hunt's rule. So how far rule is clear? I guess Hunt's rule is clear and Pauli that means if two electron is there. So first electron has entered here. Second we have to pair it up so we have to fill the opposite electron here after that the third electron will be filled here then here fifth sixth and so on okay i think these th things are clear to you next coming to our sigma and sigma star pi and pi star bonds so next we have to understand what are these sigma what are these pi bonds what is sigma star what is this pi star okay so as we have covered already this bonding molecular orbital that means bmo orbital so lower energy bmo so th this is our bmo which are those abmo this is our abmo this is abmo anti bonding molecular orbital this is bmo bonding molecular orbital abmo has higher energy so the orbital whenever there is a sigma combination what are these sigma combination? Sigma combination means this is 1s, this is a 1s. So as we already covered, s and s, whenever they will combine or overlap, they will form one sigma, right? So this is sigma, this is also sigma. So that sigma has formed from 1s, right? So we will write uh, this is as sigma 1s. Why 1s? Because the atomic orbitals are 1s. And this is called, this orbital is called BMO. So BMO we have to write sigma 1s. How about the higher energy? ABMO. ABMO we have to write sigma 1s, 1s, 1s combination. And this is also anti-bonding molecular orbital. So for anti-bonding molecular orbital, we have to put it star. I think this is clear to you, okay? Similarly, if you'll talk about the 2s and 2s combination so 2s 2s one again s s combination they will form one sigma 2s sigma star 2s okay how about this pi will come pi whenever there is a combination of p and p and that combination has to one lateral overlapping or combination Okay, so I think these are clear to you. Sigma, sigma star, pi and pi star. So let us just go to the next slide. The next part, here we are combination of 1s, 2s and 2p. Now I think you can, here is the combination of 1s, 2s and 2p with 1s, 2s and 2p. Both having same energy. So same energy, so both having same energy. So now just understand what is the combination sequence. So we have to remember this, whenever the species has 14 or less than 14 number of electron, then we have to remember this sequence, okay? So this is very, very easy to remember. See, 1s, 1s, I already know, 2s, 2s, okay? So 1s, 1s, so this 1s, 1s, when they will combine, they will form sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbital. Similarly, when 2s and 2s they will combine, they will form sigma 2s, then sigma star 2s. So this is BMO, this is ABMO. And we are also following the alpha rule and Hunt's rule that you have to remember. Again, this 2p and 2p. So 2p, 2p, when they will co combine, how many different orbitals are combining? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Total 6 
molecular orbital it has to generate so this is one two three four five six okay i think that is also clear to you now combination will follow first it will follow pi 2px pi 2py so you have to remember this pi 2px and pi 2p so next we'll discuss about the total number of electron is more than 14 remember more than 14 so less than 14 more than 14 what is the difference the only one difference is whenever you are doing the total number of electron is more than 14 just remember this sequence here what happens what is the change the change is after sigma 2s sigma 2pz will come remember this one sigma 2pz will come this is the catch okay so after sigma 2s 2pz will come and after sigma 2pz pi 2px and pi 2py will come this is the only difference okay if you understand this difference then your problem solving is very very easy so we'll apply this theory and we'll try to solve the numericals so see Filling of electron is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Like that you have to fill it. Now next we have to learn about the bond order. Okay. So what is this bond order? Bond order is 1 by 2 or half NB minus NA. What is this NB? This NB is bonding molecular orbital. What is this NA? Antibonding molecular orbital the meaning is number of electron present in bmo minus number of electron present in abmo or star one okay let us just understand in the previous diagram so we have come to the diagram so uh, now tell me what is the bond order bond order is one by two half nb minus na so let us just try to find out the bond order of this particular molecule 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So total number of electron is total number of electron is 16, right? So this comes under and is total number of electron is more than 14. That means we have to apply the this particular MOT diagram. So this is our molecular orbital. This is our atomic orbital. This is also atomic orbital. Okay. So electrons are filled according to the alpha rule, Hans rule, and Pauli's exclusion principle. Now, how to can calculate the bond order? Bond order means half. NB, this is our BMO, right? NB means BMO, NA means ABMO. So, total number of electron in BMO. So, how many electrons are there in BMO? This is one BMO, this is another BMO, and this whole part is also BMO. That means without star one. So, without star one is how many electrons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So 10 electrons in the BMO. How many electrons are there in the ABMO? So this is our ABMO. This is also ABMO. And this is also ABMO. So how many electrons are there in ABMO? So this is 2. Here is also 2. Here is 1 plus 2, 2. So 2 plus 2 plus 2. How many? 6 are there. 6. So what is the bond order? Bond order means 10 minus 6 is 4. So 4 by 2 is 2. So in this diagram, the bond order is 2. I think you have already understood how to calculate the bond order. So next we are going to understand stability of the molecule is directly proportional to the order of the molecule or bond order of the molecule. So this is bond order. So that means more is the bond order, more is the stability more is stability okay bond length and bond order they are inversely proportional to each other okay so next we are going to try to solve these questions i will tell you how to solve this question by two method okay first one by drawing the mot diagram second one by the shortcut method that is you can calculate the total number of electron and just uh, you can say that the, the bond order is like this so let us try going by MOT diagram. So what is the B2? Okay. First we'll try B2. So B2, the MOT diagrams are first 1S, 1 boron, second boron. Okay. So 1S will combine with 1S, 2S will combine with 2S, then 2P. Okay. So I'm just drawing the only line diagram. So 1S will be, this is our sigma 1S, 
above that sigma star 1s this is sigma 2s sigma star 2s and 2p how many electrons are there so 1 boron 5 2 boron 10 so total number of electron is 10 that means uh, 10 electron 10 and after sigma 2s this one is pi 2p x comma pi 2p y okay you just remember the sequence after that you, you can easily do it so how many electrons are there 10 electrons so we have to follow the rule 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 this follows the hunts rule okay so we have to find out the bond order so what is the bond order bond order is equal to half nb minus na so what is nb number of electron present in the sigma so this is two this is two and this is two so six minus uh, number of electron present in the anti-bonding molecular orbital so how many electrons are there two plus two that is four so the answer is two by two is one okay so bond order is one now i am going to tell you about the shortcut method so you just count the number of electron in the radical or the molecule okay so i am writing here radical or molecule if the total number of electron is 14 then the bond order is fixed that is 3 if you'll increase the electron by 1 15 electron bond order is 2.5 decrease the bond order by 0.5 this is the sequence okay you just remember uh, 16 will be decreased by 0.5 that is 2 17 will be 0.5 decrease that is 1.5 18 electron 1 19 0 0.5 20 bond order is zero so what is the meaning of bond order zero that means molecule does not exist molecule does not exist okay so what about the number of electron is less than 14 so 14 is 3 less than 14 total number of electron if it is less than 14 less than 14 means 13 okay so 13 number of electron is bond order is 2.5 next decrease by 1 that is 12 bond order is 2 11 bond order is 0 1.5 10 bond order is 1 9 bond order is 0 0.5 and 8 bond order is 0 so to verify these calculations uh, so we have we will try to solve these questions okay so now tell me c2 c2 how many electrons are there carbon is 6 into 2 so total 12 electron so 12 electron means what is the bond order tell me 12 electron bond order is 12 electron bond order is 2 so bond order is 2 h2 plus h2 plus you can do what is the bond order that is 0 0.5 next one is cn minus total electron is 14 so 14 bond order is 3 next one is co 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 how many electrons are there carbon is 6 oxygen is 8 so total is 14 so 14 means bond order is 3 i think this part is clear to you and the last part we have we will check that b to 10 10 electron uh, by drawing the mot bond order is 1 and by shortcut method 10 is bond order is 1 okay so now question time so first we'll try to solve o2 plus so to total number of electron is 15 so bond order is 2.5 okay how do you know it's 15 just calculate one atom has 8 two atom will be 16 positive charge means remove remove one electron so 16 minus 1 that is 15 next is o2 so o2 total number of electron is 16 so what is the bond order bond order is 2 next one is o2 minus total number of electron is 17 bond order is 1.5 next one is o2 2 minus total number of electron is 18 so bond order is 1 so let us just check one by one by using the mot diagram so first we'll do the o2 plus so how many electrons are there 
15 electrons right now for o2 14 15 16 so half how many electrons are there 10 in bmo in anti bonding molecular orbital in abmo 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 2 6 so the answer is is 2 so that is matching with the 2 next one is o2 minus one electron increase so what you have to do you just increase the one electron so 1 by 2 nb minus na 7 that is 3 by 2 1.5 1.5 now tell me it's a paramagnetic or diamagnetic there is one unpaired electron right this is known as unpaired electron so if unpaired electron is present that is paramagnetic so this one is paramagnetic and the last one is o2 2 minus so half nb minus na uh, you have to increase the another one electron so this is 1 by 2 10 minus 8 so this is 1 i think this also match with the answer I think you have learned how to find out paramagnetic or diamagnetic, right? Unpaired electron present, that means para, unpaired, so that is para, all are paired, that is diamagnetic, okay? I hope you have learned something from this video lecture. If you want to connect with me with my social media account, my Instagram handle is this and my Twitter handle is this. Thank you for watching this video.